James. Oh, James. <laughs> we all know the classic endings to a Bond film. Bond has just saved the day, defeated the villain, got the girl, followed by a signature, oh James, or a grumpy 007. To me, this is what left you with a huge smile on your face, like the cherry on the cake after a classic Bond adventure. Some may find it cringeworthy, others love it. I fall in the ladder. I think it's a real shame we never got to see Daniel Craig's Bond getting the girl on some floatable dinghy like in the old days, having saved the day, getting some, winking to the audience. I mean, can you even imagine that stuff nowadays? With Craig, it always needed to be moody, walking off into the dark distance, dropping the necklace of his loved one with a dramatic, I never left, or driving off into the distance with his new love, or being blasted to pieces. It always needed to be different. I really hope they bring back a classic Bond ending in the future, but I think that's too much to ask in these days. In any case, today we are celebrating the way Bond films concluded as we are looking at my top 10 favorite Bond endings, starting with my honorable mention. Though the man with the golden guns ending is very run of the mill, with Bond having just defeated the villain, disposed of the henchman, saved the day with a beautiful girl in his bed, and the joke of M trying to get in touch with Bond and Goodnight. Bond. Bond, are you there? Good night. She's just coming, sir. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, sir. <clears throat> But what makes it the honorable mention to me is Lulu's alternate version of the title song ending the film. No need to fear. James Bond is here. To me, it's such a powerful way to end this film because it's true, Bond should give you that reassurance that no matter what, he's always around to keep the world safe. The ending absolutely taking away that reassurance is No Time To Die's ending, the worst Bond ending by a milestone. Killing off Bond in the end still holds up as the biggest sin the movie makers ever made because this is the exact opposite of what I think any self-respecting Bond fan wanted to see. I did a whole two-part in-depth review on No Time To Die, talking about the ending in great lengths, voiced my opinions for both camps, but in short, it still leaves me with such a sour taste, which I think is exactly opposite of what I want to feel like walking out of a Bond film. Of course, the real ending of the film is with Madeline and Bond's daughter talking about Bond almost in the shape of a legend, followed by the driving into the tunnel to Matera, ending with Louis Armstrong's classic, We Have All the Time in the World. But eh, there is a lot of stuff that I did like in No Time to Die, but the ending certainly really wasn't for me. Now let's get to the 10 that I do really love. M sent you. Only to plead for your return, sir. M says that without you in the service, he fears for the security of the civilized world. Never again. There is definitely a consensus within the Bond community that Never Say Never Again is considered one of the worst Bond films. It's not even an official Eon produced Bond movie. And I dislike the title song playing over the sea. But there is just something wholesome about Connery's true swan song. Saying goodbye to the real 007, now going into retirement. Getting the girl, winking to the audience, it's incredibly cheesy. But God, do I always have a major smile on my face when I see this dude do that. Even if you argue that by today's standards, you could never get away with this kind of stuff anymore. But to me, Sean Connery is simply a winner. Winners go home and fuck the prom queen.
There is also something wholesome about the ending of Goldeneye, which I think has everything to do with the great chemistry between Broston and Skorupko. I don't think he had another Bond girl quite with this playful chemistry between them. The joke of the pair thinking no one is around still holds up as a fun ending. I suppose that one is worth seeing. Hmm. There's no one within 25 miles, believe me. Yo, Jimbo! <laughs> yeah, I said I'd be here, huh? Yo, a ring! It's all just good fun. And again, the playful chemistry between Bond and Natalia just really hits home. You ready? I'm not going on the helicopter with you. Hmm? No plane, no train. <laughs> Nothing that <laughs> What could possibly go wrong, eh? <laughs> the day is saved, jokes are made, the smiling of the pair seems really genuine and it honestly just leaves you doing exactly the same having just witnessed a fantastic Bond film. My only complaint is the song playing over the end credits, where I feel they really could have picked pretty much everything else to conclude the movie with. But other than that, a fun ending to a solid Bond film. Connery's Bond usually is the Bond to end the movies on the water, often in some inflatable rescue raft or on a boat. As a matter of fact, the only time he didn't end on the water was in Goldfinger, where he gets pussy under the parachute. But my favorite of his Bond film endings is the one in Thunderbolt, where he once again finds himself in a rescue raft. Having just survived the explosion of the Disco Volante, prevented a nuclear war, and now has the smoking hot villain's mistress in his arms. Casually preparing the rope with Domino looking at him like what the hell is this man up to now? And he just looks effortlessly cool, as if he's done all of this before. This is just routine to him. The plane comes in, the Bond theme blazes out, and the pair is being dragged along the military plane. This is classic Bond ending at its finest. And this is badass. Always wanted to have Christmas in Turkey. Is that a Christmas joke? For me? No. We all know the reason the Bond girl in the world is not enough was even called Christmas to begin with is so that Bond could throw this cheesy line at her. What's wrong about you? Yeah, how so? You know, I thought Christmas only comes once a year. But the reason I really like the ending of this film so much is because of this moment. The MI6 staff is zooming in through satellite images, figuring out the whereabouts of Bond after the nuclear submarine climax. They spot his DB5 through the satellite. They know where he is. Then we get this moment. It's getting redder. Must be a premature form of the Millennium Bug. It's a great throwback to the classic Bond endings and I absolutely loved it. This was 1999, a time I remember well and a time where you could still get away with stuff like that. I mean, this is the type of cheesiness that is just so much fun. And honestly, had you been in Bond's position, would you not totally crack that Christmas joke out too? You just gotta do it. Some may argue the ending to License to Kill is very quick in tying the story up. Felix Leiter is all cheery like, yeah, the wife got killed, lost the lag too, but hey, did I tell you I'm having french fries tonight? But I do think there is actually a lot going for this ending. It's celebrated at Sanchez's mansion for one. Throughout the movie, there is a subtle but clever subplot of Loopy trying to provoke Pam into jealousy. Her female instinct is right on the mark, she knows that Pam likes Bond. The girl is a lot more manipulative towards men than she lets on, using her Latina looks to get men to do exactly what she wants. And she succeeds in getting Pam over the edge multiple times. 
There's also a deleted scene engaging this dynamic further with Pam asking Bond who Loopy is, expressing the jealousy that Loopy is triggering. She's even checking if Pam is watching when she deliberately starts kissing Bond in front of her and she does trigger the desired reaction. Bond finally notices what is up, realizes he's been through a lot more with Pam, makes the choice to go for her, jumps into the pool and the pair make out. Granted, it's far from correct, some women probably wouldn't have taken this from a man, but somehow it's heartwarming and it's right. And unlike Goldeneye, I think Patti LaBelle's song over the end credits starting here is so suitable and romantic and also adds as a fitting song that never fails to get me reflecting on this amazing film with a smile. I don't even care about the fish winking, it never bothered me. This was the ending to the classic era of Bond films and the emotional song playing over the credits really just adds to that sentiment. Besides all the happy go banging endings Bond usually gets on, it's not just Daniel Craig that gets to have the different endings. Lazenby obviously had a totally different one too, and it's a really strong one. The assassination of Tracy still holds up as one of the most emotional, impactful and memorable endings in the entire series. I critique Lazenby often for his performance, but he's good in this particular moment. It helps that we've seen them develop their relationship throughout the film and to see Bond briefly in full happiness, only for it to be taken away by Blofeld and Irma Bund. It's really heartbreaking. I never liked how they play the Bond theme over the credits though. Louis Armstrong's We Have All The Time In The World that was played for the end credits in No Time To Die totally should have been used in the actual film it was used in for the end credits right here. It just would have been so much more suitable. If only it was followed up by anything even mentioning the death of Bond's wife in Diamonds Are Forever. Still the biggest missed opportunity for me in the entire series. The ending I absolutely loved as a kid and still do just as much as an adult. Bond has just prevented a nuclear attack on two major cities. He has defeated Stromberg, taken care of Jaws and saved the girl. He uses Stromberg's escape pod, ends up with the smoking hot Agent Triple X ready to celebrate saving the world once more. Drifting into the British Navy ship only for this brilliant moment. Double seven. Triple X. Bond, what do you think you're doing? Keeping the British hand up, sir. Nobody does. Be pleasant. Makes me feel sad for the rest. Even if you find this cheesy, you have to admit, had this been your fantasy as a man, you have just saved the world. You're with a beautiful woman on your side. You're the winner. Would you really have done this any other way? Would you have said, oh, oh, sorry, how unprofessional of me. Please don't report me for inappropriate behavior. Of course not, you've saved the world. You're the man. Time for consensual intercourse. I don't care, standards have changed. This is the fantasy and this is what James Bond is all about. Nobody does it half as good as you, baby. You're the best. Another example of a Bond ending in this exact same fashion is the ending of Moonraker, which though cheesy, I've never been able to not grin from ear to ear with. Bond has prevented the extinction of the human race in outer space. M, the British Minister of Defense, and Q are all gathered with NASA, ready to talk to Bond who's just saved the world. The footage is about to be directly broadcasted to the White House and Buckingham Palace, when... My God, what's Bond doing? I think he's attempting re-entry, sir. And that double innuendo by Q. I mean, come on, this is one of the best endings in all of Bond. No question. Take me around the world one more time. Why not? Even 
though I pretty much did a non-stop praising of Bond celebrating with the Bond girls after saving the world, I have to admit there are different endings I really, really enjoy. And I don't think that any Bond fan can deny that Casino Royale has one of the best ones ever conceived. Bond has just lost the love of his life, committing a tragic suicide after being blackmailed into working for a mysterious criminal organization. Bond has just managed to track down one of the members of this group when... Mr. White, we need to talk. Who is this? <laughs> The name's Bond. James Bond. Apart from Majesties, this really was one of the first endings in my life to teach me you can end a Bond film without Bond sleeping with the Bond girl. I was fully prepared to see this movie end like the novel with... Job's done. The bitch is dead. But instead, they made it come full circle with their ending. They showed us part of Bond's origin in an original way. He has now become the secret agent we know and love. This, to me, was a brilliant move and convinced me Craig put Bond in good hands after honestly having serious doubts beforehand. There was only one ending that triggered an even greater reaction for me. When we first watched Casino Royale, we had no Q and no money penny. There was just this random dude who I assumed was just supposed to be the new male secretary working for M. Apart from Tanner, none of these MI6 regulars showed up in Quantum of Solace either. It had been a long time since Bond films felt like classic Bond films. Then Judy Dance's M died in Skyfall. It felt like the end of an era. I was absolutely expecting Ray Fiennes' Mallory beforehand to take over the mantle. However, I still don't know to this very day how I managed to dodge the news of Naomi Harris's Agent Eve being the new money penny until seeing this film in cinema and I'm still so happy I got the surprise firsthand. This whole scene to me was where the familiar feeling of a Bond film returned. You know, we've never formally been introduced. Oh. Well, my name's Eve. Eve Moneypenny. Well, I look forward to our time together, Miss Moneypenny. I'm sure we'll have one or two close shaves. Morning, 007. Good morning, Tanner. He'll see you now. So, 007. Lots to be done. Are you ready to get back to work? With pleasure. M. With pleasure. This whole scene left me in a standing ovation in cinema. Something I've never done in theater before and never done since. What a fantastic conclusion to an amazing Bond film. We finally have a cue again. Now it was revealed to be Money Penny all along. We not only have to fantasize Bond and Money Penny have history, we've seen it during the film. Now for the first time since the 80s, there was a male M again. Bond standing in that classic MI6 office with the classic leather door, another feature not seen since the old days. Bond receiving his next mission, obeying the new M, calling him Sir. All of this blending into the gun barrel and the 50 year anniversary logo. To me, this was the last time Bond was celebrated at an all-time high. Skyfall's ending was pure class. It's been a while since I did a ranking 007 episode, so if you enjoyed this one, please like and subscribe and check out the ranking 007 playlist for the other ranking episodes I made so far. Or check out my channel for a lot more Bond content. And if you want to go the extra mile in supporting the channel, please take a look at my Patreon page too. See you guys in the next video.